We're having a baby. <laughs> Mission log. It is 9.30? It is. We've been up since 5. It is 9.40. You're on the Upper East Side of Mount Sinai. Upper East Side of Mount Sinai. <laughs> it's gonna be a long day, allegedly. Tell us, why are we here? My water broke this morning at like 5.30, I would say. <clears throat> and I've been having mild contractions all week, so it's Friday, and I, like mild contractions, Braxton Hicks, it's kind of what I felt like. Um, my last appointment, I was not dilated at all, my cervix was completely closed, I was pretty convinced I was going to go to his due date, but we are now 39 weeks in one day, and it definitely broke. It's very obvious that my water broke. I basically went to the bathroom and then I stood up and just kept, liquid just kept coming out. I shouldn't say I feel great. I don't feel great. Like I don't, I don't feel horrible yet. I'm having pretty consistent contractions. Um, and that's pretty much it. I'm on a baby monitor here. We're hooked up. Yep. Baby monitors. Uh, baby boy is looking great. I already met the doctor. She said it's going to be a long day. So I'm thinking like around dinner time, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Welcome to our crib, MTV. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is our... Okay. So we're going to stay... How zoomed in? Guess what's in. <laughs> We got, we got a lot of angles today and we got to really work together because you're in charge of the camera. I wouldn't this have given me risky. that job. This is a this is a lot, this is vulnerable. We're in a vulnerable state. We got to give good angles only, you know, you feel me? This is, this is where I'm going to deliver the baby. And then we get moved to a postpartum room. We're going to try to film as much as we can. I do know that there's like a no filming rule for like when I'm actually pushing. I don't know if I'm gonna wanna film anyways. We'll see um, what happens. I'm just, as I'm all new to this, so we'll see. But we'll try to film as much as we can um, because it's obviously literally the best day, the most special day of our lives. So I wanna document as much as I can. They don't allow it, they don't allow it. I'm, oh, I'm two centimeters dilated. So I gotta get to 10. So like I said, it's gonna be a day. All right, I thought I'd update you guys a little bit. Uh, having pretty frequent contractions. They're manageable. Patrick. One snack duty. I'm all hooked up to a lot of different wires. Sorry, that might have, if people are grossed out by needles, that might have grossed you out. There's not much updates in general, just that the contractions are getting more intense. And we're chilling. We're watching a movie. <laughs> we're going to be here for a while, so I'm just trying to try to relax, try to rest before it gets really intense and before, you know, the craziness starts. Last time she checked, I was three, centimeter, three centimeters dilated and 70% effaced. So, I got a ways to go. I gotta get to 10. So, see ya in a little bit. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay, so I was just checked. Five centimeters. <laughs> Tried to take something for my heartburn. Said no. Body said no. No, thank you. Rejected. So I get jello. So, that's nice. Oh my God. Well, you called it really quick. You're like, that's that's not sitting well. No, I had a feeling, dude. Oof. Very controlled, though. Point that toe.
preparation, folks. I got an epidural, so I feel much, like, just great. I feel great. The epidural is amazing. How'd that go? <laughs> um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't, oh, he's moving. I was telling Patrick I'm so excited for him to be able to hold him. I've been holding him for nine months. Oh, that was so cute, Nugs. Yeah, I'm so excited for you. I'm excited too. I'm excited, obviously, to meet him, but I'm just like, so excited for you. I think I'm going to be emotional, and I don't get emotional. But between the monitors, we still have baby. I have little bub in there. I will say, I'm really happy that he decided <clears throat> or my water decided to break at like 5 a.m. because then we were able to get into an Uber and not like hit traffic because we have to travel really far. We're in Brooklyn and we're all the way on the Upper East Side delivering. So I was so random, not randomly, but like stressed about that. I was like, what if it breaks during rush hour and I'm stuck in traffic and I deliver my baby in a cab? You know, that sort of thing. Be a great story though. It'd be a great story, but I just kind of wanted to avoid wouldn't, that. Wouldn't want to. So, no. the ride here was very calming. I was not stressed. It was really good. So, I thought I'd update you about that because we kind of just started the vlog in the hospital. There was a lot going on this morning, you know? Yeah, we kind of just, this is my first time with this. So, I just was like, okay, my water broke, I think. Called the doctor. And then she's like, yeah, come in. So, I was like scrambling to get things and I don't even know if I have everything but we we'll have the out. baby but we have and that's baby important and that's all that matters everything else we can figure out yeah I have really bad heartburn that's like I threw up already I threw up <coughs> I threw up because nausea and the heartburn the heartburn is pretty bad you know keep it real I'm, I'm chipper right now but I did I did throw up Speaking of chips, how many ice chips have you had? Yes, I also had ice chips. I'm so very hungry, and I've been thinking about the food that I want to get when he's here. First thing on your mind? I really want like an Italian hoagie. Like a cold cut? Like a cold cut. Because you haven't you know, had those. I know, and if you know when you're pregnant, you can't have cold cuts. Or at least they tell you not to. So I just want like a nice Italian sub. What kind of bread? I don't, I don't know. You don't know yet? All right. No. We'll get there. Yeah. And I just like, like a good spread, like pickles. Mm, that sounds so good. <laughs> Which is surprising because I was nauseous and I literally just threw up and then I started thinking about food. So, you know, can't wait. Fortunately, we can control the temperature, but not necessarily the airflow. So, Miss Tess thought of this. Look it's at a, that. It's a lifesaver. Like truly, the, the constant air, the cool breeze is so nice. I am like in it right now. I feel so much pressure in my butt and like they're strong. Another preparation, my lip mask. It's dry. It's dry up in here. <laughs> and this is like crucial. Holy crap. I'm so uncomfortable. Well, you look beautiful still, so you have that going for you. I love you. I can't believe I'm about to push out a human. I don't know how we got here. Did you ever think you'd do that? Yeah, I've always wanted to be a mom, but it just like doesn't really feel real. Real again? Until you're there, like I'm here and I'm like, I'm gonna push him out. Like it's so weird to me. Um, I'm not pushing him out, but it still doesn't feel real. I know. You know? I'm so excited to those, meet him. Those are nine months and they're down to just a couple hours more and... You doing okay, bub? Oh well, I feel like then I have to throw up. 
Do you want the bucket? Yeah, maybe. Just next. Less than ideal news, just because we've been here for so long and we were very set on a vaginal delivery. Um, I've been stuck at eight centimeters dilated for a few hours now and um, baby is not liking it. His heart rate is a little concerning, so obviously, you know, the doctors and the nurses are super concerned about that, so we ended up going with the decision to do a C-section just so we can get him out and make sure he's healthy. Um, I'm obviously scared, like, a lot, so I'm just waiting for the doctor to come back in and tell us that we are good to go in the operating room. Very lucky Patrick can come with me, so I don't have to go alone. And yeah, I'm just, I'm so excited to meet him. I know I'm gonna feel so much better when he's out. Obviously, my main emotion and nerves is because I just like am worried about him. So I just want him out now. Patrick's been great. I've been just trying different positions, trying to get my cervix to soften and like me to dilate more and we've been trying pretty much everything at this point so it's now time to not cause any more stress for him and just make the decision to go with the c-section we will see you on the other side with little baby and in the recovery room we're gonna be here for the next couple days so So free, oh my sweet baby. I Cause you put all the pieces back together. So what? <laughs> I'm right. Yeah, you, you're making me wanna try forever. I feel so free. I'm a sweet baby So this is Theodore. We call him Theo. He is the most perfect little angel. I am so in love and so obsessed with him. Uh, he is sleeping right now, so I will include a clip of him just a little bit more awake so you guys can see his sweet face. He is just amazing. So he is five weeks, a little bit over five weeks now, so it's been a little bit over a month, uh, which reminds me to just thank you guys so much for just being so sweet and being so patient with YouTube. Um, it has been so nice to have somewhat of a maternity leave and just kind of be able to focus all of my time and energy into him. Uh, we are first time parents, as you guys know, so this has been an insane five weeks. Uh, it's been so amazing, but so, like we've just been learning every single day. Uh, we're taking it day by day and just getting to know him, figuring it all out. I've been figuring out breastfeeding and pumping and, and his sleep schedule and what he needs so it has been like the fastest five weeks but also the slowest at the same time it's been crazy so I just wanted to say thank you guys for uh, just sending me sweet messages and just telling me to take my time and soak in all of those first few weeks uh, because it made me just breathe a, just a sigh of relief knowing that you guys aren't like where's the video where's the video so it's been really nice because I know you all are so excited to see him and see this video. This has been such an incredible journey and I'm so lucky so many of you guys are interested in it and also are just so sweet and loving towards him. So I'm very, very happy and excited to share him with you. He is just perfect. <laughs> I was going to set him down, but he seems pretty content right now. So I figure I'll just do the labor and delivery birth story now. I wanted to give a little brief explanation of everything that went down, just because there were a few things that I unintentionally left out. I was just so distracted by the day that um, I just forgot to mention a few things that might be interesting. 
So I thought I would close out the video with just kind of talking about what ended up happening, happening especially at the end there. Uh, crazy. So a big thing I forgot to mention and that kind of caused everything to go down was Pitocin. I was put on Pitocin about three to four, when I was three to four centimeters dilated and that's kind of why the whole last bit of my delivery process switched up so quick. So I was on Pitocin, everything was fine for a while and then uh, when I was probably seven centimeters dilated we noticed his heart rate dropping which and i say we as in like the doctors and the nurses obviously we don't know what we're doing when we're there um but that was terrifying as you can imagine for both patrick and i but also the doctors and nurses were like ah oh, we don't really like this it wasn't a concerning drop like a really like emergency but they were like we're gonna keep an eye on this so for a while they thought maybe I had lost too much fluid and there wasn't anything to cushion him every time I would have a contraction so he'd almost get like squeezed and like stressed um, and it would cause his heart rate to drop. So they thought maybe we would put more fluid back into me and you know give him some cushion so they thought they were going to do that and then the doctor came in and was like okay it's not that I think it might actually be the Pitocin. Once I was off Pitocin, he was fine. So they were really happy about that. The only issue is that I ended up not dilating on my own without the Pitocin. So I essentially was stuck at seven to eight centimeters dilated. They would come back hours after hours, so such a long process, and they would check me and I would still be seven to eight centimeters dilated. And so then the doctor's like, all right, let's put you back on Pitocin, see how he does. We ended up trying so many different positions of just like me laying. So I would lay on my side, I would lay on the right side, left side, sit up, um, move around as much as I could. And uh, he would be fine. And then there would be one really strong contraction and his heart rate would drop again. So this was just like a very emotionally stressful thing for me because i felt like i couldn't do anything uh, i just was kind of waiting for the doctors and nurses to tell me what i could do and like how to help him i just kind of felt super super helpless um so then around 1 a.m the doctor came in she checked me again i was still seven to eight centimeters dilated and she was like we can't do any more pitocin it's not good for him so we need to look into the option of a c-section so i was like okay um, or a cesarean whatever you want to call it however there was a line like a queue to get into the operating room and because mine wasn't an emergency situation because off pitocin he was fine uh and so they took me off pitocin and they were like you'll just wait here for a couple hours until we can get an OR, we can go in and we can do the C-section. So that's the last clip you saw was us being like, okay, we're gonna go, it was 1 a.m. We knew we had to wait for a couple hours to be able to uh, get a spot and get a cesarean. So what happened at, during those two hours, I must have just dilated on my own without really knowing uh, because she came back in and they were all ready to go up to the OR. It was just my doctor and the nurse and they had a pediatricians and other people that were going to tend to him waiting upstairs in the OR. They were about to wheel me in there. Patrick had a full scrub set on and she's like, let me just check you one more time. She checked me. She looked at the nurse and she kind of laughed and she was like, stranger things have happened, but you are fully dilated, so we can try to push. And I was like, what? She looked at Patrick, she's like, you can take your scrubs off. You're gonna need to help her, like, let's go. We're gonna try to do this in three pushes. If he doesn't move in three pushes, we're gonna go upstairs and we're gonna do the C-section. So I was like, uh, okay. I remember hearing the doctor she had like a kind of like a walkie-talkie thing where they were talking to the people up in the OR they were said where is this patient they said we're pushing they all said what so she said come down because the people that were tending to him after he was born were all upstairs so they needed to come down and they hooked me up in the stirrups ready to go and she told me to push I closed my eyes the entire time and I pushed uh, four pushes in total for 12 minutes and he was out. So it was crazy. I think I remember Patrick saying on push two, he was like, I can see his head. And the doctor was like, 
the heads here were good we can we can push them out and yeah i had two more pushes after that second push and then next thing you know she placed him on my chest and i was in absolute shock because i it, it was so quick it was so fast how everything went down and i had a baby in my arms and i remember looking at patrick and i'll never forget his face he was in utter shock as well we just were not expecting to see him that soon and also have that quick of an experience and I always thought you know I would be pushing for a long time and it just was unreal so that is the story in itself obviously he was born he was healthy perfectly healthy and everything went well I have more details I can talk about postpartum and uh, just things that happened down there but I'm gonna get into that in a different video uh, because I have some stuff that helped me that I think maybe could help you guys but I want to get into that in a different video and also just talking about my postpartum experience um, but yeah it was wild so that happened and then within 24 hours we were discharged and we could go home and we've been with him ever since I can't even get over the feeling and that experience and just becoming a mom has just been the most rewarding thing for me. Uh, I am fully in it and it's just, ugh. I think I'm going to end the video here and not blabber on too much. I'm excited to be back on YouTube. Uh, we started vlogging, which has been interesting. I want to show you kind of the real life of being a mom, but also kind of get back into our normal routine and our normal life. Uh, so yeah, please know he is going to be a part of our lives. He's going to be in, you know, some vlogs, uh, but it's not going to be the center of my channel. I don't want this only to be, you know, a mom channel. I am a mom now, so it definitely changes for me. Uh, but I want to get back into the things on this channel of why you followed me, you know, like fashion and New York and guides and things like that. Uh, but in vlogs and in travel videos, you'll just have a new little guy to, uh, see. I am very excited for just this new chapter in my life and I feel so blessed to be able to have all these online memories and be able to share it with such loving, amazing, supportive people. You all are so great and have been so amazing through my whole pregnancy and all of this. It's just been incredible. So thank you again. Thank you again for watching and I will see you all in my next video. Bye. Say bye Theo. <laughs>